How's it going, ladies and gentlemen? My name is Waffle Rallets, and today I want to tell you guys about basically 19 to 18 different secrets and Easter eggs that can be found in the Indigo Disc. If you guys are ready, sit back, relax, and also check out our most recent merch. The Terror Boys shirts are out right now if you guys want to go check them out and buy one. Either way, let's get started. Number one, there is a reference to the Nature Preserve from Unova. Now, the Nature Preserve from Unova is really interesting. It's specifically a location that you would go to and you could find a static encounter of a shiny Haxorus. And if you look at the shape of it from above, it looks just like this location, specifically where you can find... Haxorus as well in the Terrarium, which is a direct reference and even could be a possible hint that this is supposed to be some sort of, I guess the right way to put it would be some sort of paradox or parallel version of Unova that this Blueberry Academy is kind of based on. It's kind of weird to imagine, but it's also really, really cool. So this is a direct reference to Unova, which means we can probably expect some Unova stuff next year. Next up, you can get Meloetta in this game. To actually get it, it's pretty straightforward. Once you've completed the game and stuff, you just gotta go over to the coastal area. You spin around, literally gotta spin in the game for 30 seconds. After you've done it for 30 seconds, you gotta use your camera and use a special filter, the Sapia filter. If you've used that, it will actually show up. Number three, speaking of Meloetta and the Sapia filter, that's actually a reference. If you guys don't know it, back in the games when you actually had to get them in black and white, there is a character you have to talk to before you can actually do the quest, and he talks about a long ago melody from the fringes of my, of my sepia toned memories. So sepia tone, specifically a tone of color, right? Which is exactly the one that you need to see Meloetta and summon it in the game, which is so freaking cool and such a far away throwback. I freaking love it. You transfer a Deoxys over to the game. The only way to change its form, if you don't already have the change form like item, is actually to get the meteorite from the auction. And you can get to the auction by simply going to Porto Marinada and you gotta talk to Atticus there and then you can try to get yourself the meteorite to change Deoxys's different forms. If you have the ability to fly in the game, which is in the post game, you can actually fly to the top of the terrarium, all the way to the top. And what you will find here is actually a bunch of stellar shards for the stellar type. Also, you'll find a golden cap as well as some other items. It's a cool little Easter egg, cool little uh, you know, thing to find in case you decide to fly all the way up there for whatever reason. I mean, I'm not going to question you, but if you do do it, you're a bit of a madman. There is a special moment with Ogre Pond in the game. If you have Ogre Pond in your party, when you battle Carmen and when you battle Kieran, they will actually give you special messages. They'll have special interactions. They'll be different from normal ones where they will point out, oh, you're using that Pokemon. You're using Ogre Pond, which uh, is really interesting. I love that they added in small details like that to make the game feel a bit more unique every time you do something. If you've completed the whole game and you go and talk to Briar in the school, once you've completed the full main story, she will actually give you a special notebook. If you then take this notebook as well as Tarapa goes in your party and head over to the Kitakami Lake, something really cool would happen. One of the professors, if you're playing Scholar Violet, it will be Sada or Turo, will show up and talk to you. And they will actually have time travel to you from the past, which is really random. And the book that you give them is actually the one they use to build the time machine, which is really crazy. We were already talking about some auctions, but guess what? If you talk to Atticus in the auctions area, there's something really cool that can be doing done here, which is that you can get a bunch of really awesome items. And all these items are kind of references to stuff we've already seen. You've got the mask, for example, that was worn when you did the Delta episode with Rayquaza. You've got the visors, like the glasses that, you know, Team Flair wears, and just a bunch of small little references that can all be seen in these outfits. If you talk to one of the the guys in the school and answer all his questions, he will teach you a special pose. It seems to be a reference to John Cena, you know? It just seems like that's the case here. I could be wrong, but that seems like what the reference is too. Now, this is a massive one, and there's loads of these all around the actual, like, you know, League Club. But basically, in the League Club, if you change the room's design, which costs you a little bit of BP, one of the rooms, specifically the futuristic room, will actually have references. Yes, direct references to the Pokestar Studios from black and white. You can see the giant Tyranitar Godzilla robot version, as well as the big, like, thing that kind of looks like, um, I actually forgot what the Pokemon is, but it just looks like a giant whale almost. So yeah, or like wishy-washy kind of looking. So it's a bit crazy, but these are direct references, like instantly direct references to Unova, 
but that's not all. There's even more references. There's the black and white, specifically black city and white forest. They're on a painting, which is crazy, okay? It's just insane that it's there, which means, ladies and gentlemen, I'm pretty sure we can expect Unova very soon. And speaking of Unova, guys, if you go around the map, there are certain locations where you can actually hear the music from black and white. Specifically, I think, Route 6 audio or Route 6 music themes being played. If you guys listen here, I'm going to let you play and actually listen to what it sounds like. So if you have a Hydrapple, there's something really cool about it. If you use one of the brand new moves, uh, specifically this move, which is called, um, if I'm not mistaken, Fickle Beam, it actually has two different versions. If you have it shiny, it looks different, and also all of its heads are being used when it actually uses it. So it's pretty crazy, and the color will also change, similar to how Diplin changes its uh, you know, ability on Syrup Bomb, I think. Um, you know, depending on which color it is, which is pretty awesome. And since we're on the topic of music, there's actually a music box upgrade that you can do inside of the League Club. If you upgrade the music box set, you will get a bunch of new tracks. One of them even is a reference to, I think, Drift Vale. I think one of them is a Jubilee City one. There's a lot of different ones that you can basically get, which is really awesome, as you can get loads of different songs that are all references and Easter eggs to previous Pokemon cities and games. So if you completed the main story and you've done all the post-game stuff, you can actually go back down into the Area Zero depths, back into the lab, and you will find a book. And what's really crazy is that this book actually talks about our book that we gave to none else than the Professor, whether it be Sada or Turo. Now, then when they time traveled through the post game, they basically took that book that we gave them and they actually used that to build the time machine, which means that we caused everything to happen. We were the reason that this game happened. So it's a bit of a paradox. We caused it all to go in a circle, the kind of snake eating its own tail situation, which is really crazy because yeah, it's all just time travel, man. And it's really insane. And it's all a paradox, right? Because we both did and didn't do it at the same time. Like none of it would have happened if we didn't exist, but also only happened because we did exist. It's crazy. And speaking of the Area Zero Depths, there's also a secret room which will open up if you defeat a Stellar-type Garchomp. So if you defeat the Stellar-type Garchomp, you'll be able to get your hands on it as well, which is a room filled with items that you can get. It's really fun, but if you go into the Savannah biome and walk all the way up to this one rock, this rock is seemingly based on Pride Rock from the Lion King. Yes, it's a literal Lion King reference. And you even have a static encounter Pyroar. There is a specific Pyroar here that if you defeat it, will respawn again and will be there all the time. This is a literal reference to the Lion King. It's insane. It's just literally insane, man. I did not expect them to do something like this, but it's in the game. So there you go. Now at the start of the game, when you talk to Perrin, if you actually show her the Growlithe that she gave you from Kitakami and it's evolved into an Arcanine, she will give you a special like piece of text, which just tells you, hey, you know, I see you've evolved the Pokemon that I gave you. That's pretty awesome. So there's a small little hint, but speaking of Perrin though, if you actually make sure to capture 200 Pokemon and you bring them all back to her, she will give you the locations or rather show you an unlock unlock the Paradox Pokemon. So that's going to, of course, be the Paradox Entei, the Paradox Raikou, the Paradox uh, Kabalion, and the Paradox Terrakion. All those will be unlocked for you thanks to giving 200 Pokemon captures to her. Now, this one is a bit of a spoiler, but Pekarunt, right, which was known as Dokutaro to us before, is a brand new Pokemon, and there will be a special event. Yes, there's going to be a special event in the game's later down... Okay. 